you should know you have some amazing classmates. They have been teachers, paralegals, reporters, and served in the military. You even have a sneaker reseller. <laughs> you have a classmate that founded an art gallery, another who created a web-based health platform, and a classmate who even created a company that recreates exotic tap water from around the globe for high-end restaurants. A number of you have been involved in the cannabis industry. <laughs> Investigator navigating that regulatory world, someone else who lobbied for the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, and another classmate has run a medical marijuana company. You have been active on your campuses. We have a couple college presidents, I'm sorry, a couple presidents of Hot Hall Councils, someone who did ROTC, and someone else who worked at their campus radio station. A number of you have worked on diversity, equity, and inclusion issues on your campuses including the president of Students Organized for Black and Hispanic Unity and the founder of a multicultural student union. Many of you have been involved in college athletics, including Division I swimming, soccer, and track. I will also note that we have a number of rugby players in the class, mostly women. Going through your class personal statements and resumes, we noticed an unusual number of students that have been involved with animals. We have competitive equestrians. We have a dog motion from Alaska, and someone who helped with spine research in Michigan. That's just a small sample. One of your classmates even has a pot belly pig named for Detective Olivia Benson from Law and Order SVU. <laughs> Speaking of SVU, someone else in your class did production work on Law and Order SVU. Actually, a number of your classmates were involved in the arts and entertainment. A classmate has done video editing on documentaries about the Women's March and about lawyers behaving badly. Another classmate has done tech work for Improv Boston and someone else has written commercial jingles. We also have members of Ukrainian, Indian, and Afro-Caribbean dance groups. Your class has a member of Puerto Rico's synchronized swimming team and a silver medal winner from the Pan American Games in Venezuela for the Deaf Women's Basketball. The class of 2024 has been unusually politically involved, including the president of a college Republican chapter in a camera circle around the Democratic Party. Your classmates have attended some of the country's biggest political events, including the State of the Union Address and the CPAC Convention. One member of your class played one of the Super Bowls of American politics, the McIntyre Shaheen Day in New Hampshire. And I can tell you they honestly did an excellent job because my husband and I were in the audience. <laughs> you have classmates who volunteered on both the Bernie Sanders and the Pete Buttigieg campaigns, and one of your classmates was an intern on Lindsey Graham's Senate re-election campaign. You have interned for a wide range of politicians, from Rhode Island's Congressman David Sisley to South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. A number of you are active politically here in Rhode Island including the Rhode Island President of the National Organization of Women, a legislative aide for the Rhode Island Senate President, a policy analyst for the Rhode Island House of Representatives, and even we even have the Rhode Island House of Representatives majority women class. At a school that celebrates its social justice mission, we are excited to welcome those of you who have been on the front lines of better society. Your classmates have taught Know Your Rights classes in the Bronx, worked at legal aid in San Diego, marched against the murder of women in Mexico, served with city here in Boston, and have been arrested protesting at Rhode Island's immigrant detention facility. Our nationally known Marine Affairs Institute always attracts folks with interested ocean and coastal backgrounds, and this year is no different. This year's class includes someone who served in the Peace Corps, creating coastal management plans in the Philippines, someone who developed a podcast on water harvesting, and someone who worked as a marine planner assisting an offshore marine development. Your class also has someone who was a dive instructor in Hawaii, a deckhand on a 72-foot racing sailboat out of Newport, and a marine mammal intern at the Texas State Aquarium. A number of you took less traditional paths to get here. Some started their education in community colleges. More than one of you were not admitted the first time you applied here but came back at the process and gained admissions this year 
and we are so proud to have you in this room. A number of you know what it's like to be unstably housed, to have parents deported, or to have family involved in the criminal justice system. Many of you put your education on hold to have children. The average age of your class is 26, higher than our norm, and 15% of your class is 30 years of age or older. Your class speaks at least 16 languages, including American Sign Language, Armenian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Haitian Creole, Italian, Arabic, Hindu, Urdu, Pushkin, Telugu, Greek, German, Korean, and Russian. Some of the most impressive people in your class did not found companies, did not publish research, did not have internships in glamorous organizations. Some of the most impressive people in your class were working at the Rock College, driving Ubers, waiting tables, working at supermarkets and as baristas at Starbucks, whatever they needed to do to pay the bills and get their education. We truly honor that journey as well here today. Like 27% of your class, I was a first generation college student. I had no fancy internships and worked in a food court in my free time to pay for my education. I've read your files. I know I'm not the only one with that set of experiences. I want all of you to know that you belong here. We admitted you intentionally for the tenacity you will bring. Your legal career began today and you are ready to be leaders. Your class is overwhelmingly female. 58% of your class identifies as female, 39% as male, and 2% as gender non-binary or gender non conforming 11% of your class identifies as a member of the LGBTQ plus community. 2% of your class served in the military, representing all four branches. In this moment of reckoning in our country's history, where we continue to affirm that black lives matter, we are pleased to report that 10% of your class identifies as black as all or part of their heritage. Overall, 26% of your class identifies as BIPOC. I am also very pleased to welcome our Masters of Studies of Law students to RWU. These students mainly work with professionals, will be taking classes alongside our JD students while they earn their MSL degree. I think you will value the perspective these students will add to your experience. Thanks to COVID, I have come to realize that the law school you were joining is far more than our facility, it's our community. This law school is a living, breathing place, separate and apart from our family. It is a set of core values that truly make this law school special. Our, our commitment to our students, to deep experiential learning, to social justice, and to diversity, equity, and belonging. The team in the admissions office, Tom, Kate, Wendy, and I, we all want to say thank you. Thank you for opening up and sharing your powerful stories with us. It has been a privilege to get to know all of you. Please, please don't be strangers to the admissions office. We are excited to embark on this journey with you and see how each of you will change your world. So on behalf of all of us at Roger Williams University, welcome to Boston. He has a master's degree in economics from the University of Exeter in the UK and his JD from Northwestern. In the spirit of my earlier remarks, Dean Bowman lived in Denmark, speaks Danish, and enjoys woodworking and building furniture when he actually has free time. Dean Bowman practiced international trade law in Washington, D.C. and Chicago. His work involved trade sanctions in North Korea, espionage, money laundering, bribery, really, really boring stuff. <laughs> he began his teaching career at Mississippi College of Law before joining the law faculty at West Virginia University. He became the Dean of West Virginia in 2014. With that, I am so thrilled to hand the class of 2024 over to Dean Greater so hello again. Again, in the part of the day, we're thrilled you're here. We're excited to welcome you into the legal profession. We have some speakers for you today to talk with you about the law, as many conventions, having a career in it, about being here at Roger Williams University and being part of this team. So like I said, a key point is the community. Right? You're not the 
building, your people, and your partner. So thank you for being here. So I am going to introduce our lineup of speakers one by one. Uh, and I appreciate you giving them your full attention. We have some wonderful folks with us today. And we start with our very own university president. I'm proud to introduce to you uh, President Dr. Giannis Mialis to say a few words. Dr. Mialis is a leading innovator uh, in higher education, and he is a true friend of the law school. And I did join in 2019 with the pandemic. Uh, I did my on campus interview with Dr. Zoom. And you might say, wow, that is both brave and a shocking lack of judgment. <laughs> But I joined because this is a university that has so much, so much to say for it and so much more potential. In law school, it has such a wonderful mission. And I have the opportunity to work with him. And he's a big reason why I came to the university. Uh, President Gallus is a native of Greece. He received his bachelor's degree from Tufts University, a master's degree in mechanical engineering from MIT, a master's in economics from Tufts, and his PhD from Tufts in mechanical engineering. And he served as the dean of the School of Engineering at Tufts University from 1994 to 2002. And then he served as the president and director of the Boston Science Museum from 2003 until joining Rutgers University as its president in 2003. He has a well earned reputation for effective strategic planning. And innovative thinking, and I am really pleased to be here partnering with him as we work to serve the students of Rodney Williams University and the School of Law. So I can say a lot more uh, about Giannis about his fundraising skills. Uh, he is uh, awesome. And about his dedication to making the university a better place and serving Rhode Island, uh, the region of New England, and the nation. About his focus on making our university an innovative place that trains future legal leaders at the law school and elsewhere. And all that is true. But I'll close my introduction of Giannis by saying that our university is led by a person who understands that life is an adventure to be enjoyed and experience to be lived to the fullest. He's an avid fisherman, a fantastic ship. So, free advice. If Dr. Giannis ever says, like to come over to my house for lunch or dinner? Your answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because he's a fantastic. So, the way getting to know students, he cares about making a difference in the world and helping people and making the universe better. That is exactly what I want to work. To be honest, we're glad you're here. Thank you so much. Please give a warm welcome. This is the start of your journey to becoming distinguished lawyers. And, and jurists. But also I want to welcome you overall to the Roger Williams family because you are law school students, but also you are, you are very Roger Williams University students. So one of my favorite moments uh, at Roger Williams is before I even decided to come here when I was being interviewed, I had the incognito uh, lunches uh, to meet the students in the dining hall. I pretended I was the parent of a future student here. <laughs> And, and so then I tried to sit at uh, different spots. I, actually, I was having three lunches a day when I was here. <laughs> and, and, and the first place I sat, I sat next to, uh, was a, a young woman, a young man. Um, the young woman, woman was a first year law student, and the young man was a freshman. And they had this wonderful conversation uh, that went through politics and, and the lives of Roger, Roger Williams, Bristol campus, they were engaged. And I do encourage you to blend with other students around campus. Don't just stick with your fellow law students because you can offer a lot, a lot, especially to the younger students, but also you can learn a lot by the rest of the community members here. Uh, Roger Williams Law offers tremendous opportunities inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, Roger Williams is the best law school in Rhode Island. <laughs> And of course, we're the only school in Rhode Island. <laughs> but the advantage of being the only law school in Rhode Island is to get a lot of attention, a lot of important people that work in different uh, law uh, things, uh, lawyers and, and uh, 
judges, justices. So when you get wonderful speakers here, wonderful people that lecture, mentors for students. Uh, also, we are very fortunate to have a gorgeous campus here in Bristol. And if you haven't explored Bristol, it's a, it's a fantastic place to, to live. Beautiful, a great, friendly people, a, a very nice restaurants, a lot of cultural events. I encourage you to take full advantage of it. But also we have the Providence Campus, so you can have it both ways. A beautiful suburban learning environment, and then a city environment, where you get, get involved with a lot of internships, opportunities, and the clinics that we offer over there. Uh, as the government said, uh, we, we are in we the are, uh, middle of a strategic process, trying to develop new interdisciplinary programs that uh, were they're in their infancy now, but you have been here for three years, so I'm sure many of you will take advantage of some of the interdisciplinary programs we built in, in law and, uh, and, uh, and marine uh, and blue economy areas. The school is, uh, is distinctive in public interest law and marine affairs. And on the other hand, we have excellent marine biology and aquaculture programs. Uh, we have business school, great combination that uh, help us build programs that, uh, that would be unique, uh, unique in, the, in the country and in the world. Um, and law students have been great pride. Uh, this is my first law school orientation. I have been here for two years, but I started on August 19th, and the orientation in 2019 was August 16th. So I missed that one. There was another president here. And then last year we had COVID, so there was no in-person orientation. So this is my first law orientation, and the best one so far. <laughs> Now let me say a few words about COVID. Um, it's unfortunate that the Delta variant, even though we weren't counting on having masks, we think back on masks now, but we want to be cautious at least for the beginning of the semester and, and then monitor how things go. We did better than most universities. We did very, very well last year. We had uh, uh, we stayed over uh, well under 1% positivity rate, and we had in person instruction last year. And this was because of uh, great uh, uh, responsibilities that everybody took, students, faculty, staff, and we did very well. And I'm hoping we're going to do very well now. We're about 95% plus vaccinated, so we have reached herd immunity. But again, because of the Delta virus, we have to be cautious. So please follow the rules and, and get tested uh, frequency required to make sure that we're going to do well and get rid of the mask as soon as, as, soon as we can. So I wish you all good luck. You're at a great place. You're at a place that faculty and staff care a lot about, about you. Beautiful place. And I'm looking forward to seeing you around campus and maybe chatting in the time of the class. Thank you. It is now the time for my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Mark Morris, who is the uh, Rhode Island Bar Association's president. Mr. Morris has over 35 years of experience as a member of both the Rhode Island and Massachusetts Bar. He has handled cases before the Rhode Island Supreme Court, the Massachusetts Appeals Court, the Superior District Trial Courts in both Rhode Island and Massachusetts, and the Federal District and Bankruptcy Courts of Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Mr. Morris also has written and argued appeals to the U.S. First Circuit Court of Appeals and to the United States Supreme Court. He earned his undergraduate degree from the University of Rhode Island and his first doctorate from the New England School of Law, from which he graduated with honors. Among other leadership and public service positions, he also served on the Board of Governors, on the Board of American Association of Justice, on the Board of Governors, and as past president of the Rhode Island Association of Justice, and as a member of the Executive Committee of the Rhode Island Law Association. In short, he has lived a life of service, there's that word, by representing his clients with diligence and high effectiveness. He's improved the legal profession through his nonprofit service, including his service this year as president of the Rhode Island Bar Association. Of course, thank you so much for being here uh, and speaking with us and to our new students at OIT. President-elect, President 
this year is, is Linda Lane, and she and I bring greetings of the Rhode Island Bar Association to you. And just as Roger Williams University has the best law school in the state, we have the best Rhode Island Bar Association. <laughs> and like, like Roger Williams, the only bar association in the state mandatory bar in the state and uh, we look forward to you completing your studies and to joining our bar association. So uh, as a first step, we encourage you to apply for a law student associate membership. Uh, this year I'm especially pleased to extend the opportunity to you for first year law students free of charge. As a student member of the bar, you receive guest privileges to attend the bar's committee meetings. You will receive invitations to the bar association programs. Specifically, the law student associate membership benefits include free 24-hour, seven-day-a-week access to our online legal research library, now known as Rhode Island Case Maker, and it's soon to be uh, transitioned to what they would call fast case. And uh, this will be available through the members only uh, section of the Bar Association website. You'll also be entitled to an annual digital subscription to the Bar's informative and thought provoking magazine, now virtual. And I was former editor of this uh, magazine, the Providing Bar Journal. It's it uh, published four times a year and has great articles of. Um, interest to, to members of the bar. You will receive discounts from our association continuing legal education programs. You will be able to attend on a guest basis at bar committee meetings. You will be able to focus on a large range of matters at these meetings. Uh, in particular, you should look into the bar association's new lawyers committee. It's a great place to get acquainted with, the, uh, with recent bar members. Now, due to the pandemic, the last uh, couple of years have been uh, by Zoom only. Hopefully, we're changing that, so we're going to have a hybrid uh, Zoom live meetings um, with our committees and uh, our CLEs. So as president-elect of the Bar Association, I look forward to welcoming you into our association. I encourage you to take a look at our website at RI bar.com take a look at our great programs get a sense for what the bar association can do for you if you need help assistance any navigation you'll find that the members of the bar association the lawyers who practice in the state of rhode island are, are accessible uh, we're available to mentor you uh, and we would love for you to get involved we look forward to see you join us among the ranks of the bar members. Thank you very much. The comments about the opportunities for you to be involved in the bar, to engage, are a great example of why it's such an advantage to be the only law school in the state. We have close partnerships with the bar association, with the judiciary, with nonprofits, with employers. Uh, it's a collaborative collaborative landscape. That really works to your great advantage. So speaking of collaboration, uh, our next speaker uh, I want to introduce is Greg Hoffman, who is the president of the Law School's Law Alumni Association. He's also a partner in the law firm of Martin Gilman, where he specializes in all aspects of family and probate law in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, including complex divorce disputes, criminal defense cases, personal injury cases, and contract disputes. He received his bachelor's degree from Juilliard College and his juris doctorate from our very own Brian Williams University of Law, where he graduated in Anglican Plotting and was a member of the Bar Committee. And I've had the opportunity over the past year uh, interacting with uh, Greg in his work with our Law Alumni Association I can tell you that he is hardworking, diligent, dedicated to helping others, uh, and a loyal alum and supporter of this law school and of you as our new students. So he is an 
example, a living example of what and who a Roger Wayne University School of Law can be. Right. Thank you, Dean Bowman, for the kind words. Um, I, in my role as the president of the Roger Williams Law Alumni Association, welcome you to our family. Um, you know, we've heard the word family and community tossed around a number of times by all of these speakers, and uh, that's certainly what you guys are joining today. There are obviously a, a plethora of alums, not only in the New England area, but around the country. Um, we consider you guys part of part of that crew with us now. Um, looking around this room, your your fellow classmates, they're going to be colleagues, they're going to be adversaries, but most importantly, they're going to be people that you can rely upon and lean upon uh, for for help on cases, for job opportunities, client referrals, and and the like. So I would uh, I would encourage you to develop those relationships with your classmates. Um, you know. This is probably my third or fourth time coming to this event, once sitting in the chairs that you guys are and now um, on the other side of the microphone. My favorite part of it is listening to, to Dean Donnelly Boylan's description of your class, and, and you guys are rock stars. Um, you all belong here, as he said, and, and are going to find tons of success, not only, not only in school, but in your careers afterwards. Um, for, for any advice, if you guys are interested, I'd say enjoy your time here. Um, it's, it's meaningful. You're going to be starting on new paths and find you know, personal and professional opportunities to really dive in. Similar to, to what Mark had to say, the Alumni Association extends the offer for you guys to attend any of our events. Um, we, we generally have networking events in Bristol, in Providence, and in the, you know, the surrounding regions, Boston, Washington, D.C., uh, California, Miami, etc. Uh, we, you know, as a matter of course, you'll be getting you know, bombarded with emails from me. I'm encouraging you guys to attend those events. We would really uh, love to see those all students come, uh, interact with some of the other alumni, hear about what it is that we do, um, and, and you know, figure out what it is is that you guys want to do, um, and how we might be able to help you get there. You know, anecdotally for myself, I, you know, was able to meet a great group of alumni when I was a student. Um, that led me to having a courtship with Justice Flaherty, who is uh, going to speak to you in a moment, much more exciting than I am. Um, so, uh, I, again, I would say, welcome. You guys are awesome. You're going to succeed and do great. Please come to our alumni event. We'd love to have you, um, for the very least, to tell you our more stories um, and buy you a drink. So, if that's something that interests you, please come. If not, um, there are other people that, that have much more to offer than that. Um, you know, get involved. Meet your classmates, have fun, and um, welcome, guys. Get a Take a moment to reflect on what he just said and take a look at when he graduated. Not that long ago. Right, Mark, he's the leader in the bar in Rhode Island. So that's you and the a few short years, wherever you may be, in Rhode Island or elsewhere. So, our next speaker is a wonderful, Person, wonderful. I'm embarrassed. Uh, she is someone most of you are already met her from yesterday when we were hanging on swag at the front door of all the school. She is the president this year of our student bar association. And in that role, I get to work closely with her and the other administrators and faculty of the school. We get to work closely as we work to ensure that we as a law school can meet your needs. A law school, as I've told many of you, is not the same as an undergrad. It is uh, more work, more intense, it's a professional school. And we work with our students and our student leaders to ensure that our school is as good as it possibly can be. So keenly aware, and we're training our future college for the law, as I told you this morning. Diane is an excellent colleague, an excellent student, and an excellent colleague. I'm proud to work with her, I'm proud to work for her, and I'm very, very grateful for her leadership. Last year, in her role as vice president of the SBA, she was instrumental in making sure that we successfully got through the 
year uh, with all the challenges. So she's deeply involved in the student life of our school. In addition to serving as SBA president this year and vice president last year, he is a member of the law school's family law society, the Latino Law Student Association, the Multicultural Law Students Association, Women's Law Society, Health Law Society, and she also participates in our first generation. In other words, she is a stone. She received her bachelor's degree in psychology and criminal justice from Roger Williams University, which makes her um, Thank you, Dean Bowman. On behalf of Rockwell University School of Law Student Body and the Student Bar Association, welcome to law school. Um, it's absolutely an honor to represent Rockwell University School of Law um, SBA as the president. Before I begin giving you guys advice, let me tell you a little bit more about me. So my name is Diana Perez. I'm from North Providence, Rhode Island. Um, that is its own town. We're not the northern part of Providence. We have our own town, our own mayor, police department, school system. Crazy, I know. But now you know a little bit more about Rhode Island. Um, after graduating from North Providence High School, I went to Rockwell University where I graduated in 2018 with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and psychology. Um, another fun fact about Roger Williams University, when you're an undergrad, we actually call the school Roger. We don't call it our woo, um, so don't do that. Um, we'll make a face and correct you. Yes, we do understand that Johnson Royals University calls themselves J Woo. We don't care, we still don't like our woo. <laughs> um, after undergrad, I did do an AmeriCorps program called City Here in Providence. Um, there I was a student success coach at a DLL um, fourth, grade, um, fourth grade classroom. And then I had the fun to come back to Roger from law school. Um, Roger Williams Law is a dynamic law school full of well-respected faculty and staff members, an administration who truly cares. While many of them may seem to intimidating during the first few weeks of classes, and they will be intimidating, um, do not be discouraged. Even if you mess up on a cold call, get back to the case wrong, it'll be okay. The staff and professors will still be there for you to help them out in any way that they can. Honestly, everyone in law school is so worried about themselves, like if they're messing up or, or anything that they're not really paying attention to you. Um, if, um, and if you don't believe me, think about when you got ready today for orientation. I'm sure some of you guys are like, am I even wearing the right outfit? Do I bring a pen? Do I need my backpack? What about a laptop? Um, and what if I say something dumb? Um, but honestly, it's honest. It's like the gym. You know, you go to the gym and you're so worried that people are corrupting your form or looking at you at the gym, but everyone's too busy thinking about themselves. They're really not looking at you. So, you know, um, it does feel kind of strange to be standing in front of all of you guys because I do remember just two years ago being in these very seats, listening to all the speakers and um, listening to the SBA president of that year. And there was one thing that he had said that really stuck with me. And that was, you know, at law school, they say that there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And in law school, you realize that really is true. But then you realize it's just a train and it's coming right at you. <laughs> outlines, cold calling, and reading, it's a mental game. So buckle up and get ready for the roller coaster, because the impact will hit you, um, and some days will be long, but the weeks will fly by. So now for some advice that slash words of wisdom for me. One thing that I think helps me the most, my one all year, and something I hope sticks with you guys the most, if you listen to anything that I say, um, no one knows you better than yourself. In fact, you're the only person who will always be on your team. In law school, especially, you're going to get a lot of advice, but take it all with a grain of salt. Do not drop everything to try to become the perfect law student. 
If you're a handwriter with your notes, do that. If you like to take notes with your laptops, do that. If you're a morning person and a more productive early morning, do that. If you're a late evening, do that. Um, your, what works for one person or even a professor may not work for you. And that's okay, and you can still succeed. Once you get your midterm, midterm grades back, if you're not happy or if you want to improve, then slowly alter what you're doing that still fits into your comfort zone. Remember, you are all smart and hardworking people, and that's why you're here. On the flip side, because you've all been successful in life, that's another element about law school that makes it hard. Everyone in this room has been successful at one point in their life, and I've been at the top. Now you're amongst a group of people who have all been at the top, and you're about to embark in a subject that is difficult and not always easy to understand. And it's basically like learning a new language. So the idea of feeling un unintelligent is new territory for many of you. But once you become okay with the idea that it's okay that you might walk into class without understanding the material, and that will happen, um, just know it will be cleared up once you're in class, and if you still don't understand the subject, either ask a question in class or go to office hours. I know many of you are going to still be nervous, but know that the staff, professors, and administration at this law school is all going to help you. They really do care about their students. And we're all rooting for you, and we're all here to help in any way we can. So good luck, and welcome to law school. Saturday is retired Associate Justice of Rhode Island Supreme Court. Tireless supporter of Champion Four, our law school and our law. Prior to his service on the state Supreme Court, Mr. Larry served as a member of the Rhode Island Board of Governors for Higher Education, as the mayor of City of Warren, and as a lawyer in private practice. Mr. Flaherty is a graduate of Suffolk University Law School and Providence College, Korean College and Law School. He served in the United States Army from 1968 to 1970. His service included the deployment to Vietnam where he earned the Bronze Star for Valor. Mrs. Flaherty, thank you for your service. Justice Flaherty retired from the Rhode Island Supreme Court in December 2020. I'm presuming that has nothing to do with the fact that I just got to the state instead of had it. So I thought, <laughs> serving as a distinguished jurist in residence at our law school at our law. Now, I've been a lawyer for 27 years now, and I'm in my 18th year as law professor and my 8th year as dean. And I can honestly say that I have rarely met someone in my professional career who is as welcoming as Justice Blair is, who is as proud of a law school Justice Blair, Justice Blair is a Broadway University school. We're really, truly really lucky to have this school. Thank you very much. So it is entirely fitting that he has joined us today to say a few words to you as you begin your law school careers and to administer to you our law schools both of professions. Justice, thank you so much for being here today. here today, it dawned on me that it was 50 years ago next week that I entered law school. 50 years. Now the law profession is challenging. No matter what you're doing, you're practicing it, teaching it, you're a judge, you're a litigator, whatever you might be doing, is challenging. So I hope that after 50 years with the law, all of you don't look as bad as I do now. <laughs> I have a great admirer of this law school, and I did not, this, this law school didn't exist when, uh, when, when I went to law school. And I'm an admirer of it primarily for two reasons. Number one, that, you know, there are a lot of, I've been in my role judging uh, moot court competitions at various law schools and visiting various law schools in different one role or another, one reason or another. Law schools can be pretty cutthroat places. It's every man and every woman for 
himself or herself in a lot of lost words. I haven't seen this here. This is the law school where the students care about each other, they help each other, there's a lot of collaboration. It's, it's a wonderful aspect of this law school, and I think you've chosen well in coming here, no matter where you came from. I've discussed with uh, Dean uh, Donnie Boyle, did I get that right? That, sometimes I get it back. <laughs> um, and, uh, one of the great things about being on the Supreme Court is even when you're wrong, you're right. <laughs> one of the best things I've done. So, I told them when they referred to this school as Rhode Island's only law school, or the only law school in the state, I think it devalues this school because the school has a reach that goes now way beyond, way beyond the borders of this state. As you can tell by the recitation of where you came from and what you've done, this is not a local law school anymore. In its quarter century of uh, uh, existence, it has been a leader in the cutting edge of experiment, experiential law school clinics. This, this law school is, is out front, and it is a, truly a very, very good place. I served as an active member on the, on the Rhode Island Supreme Court. I almost said United States Supreme Court. What have been done? Rhode Island Supreme Court for 18 years. In those 18 years, I had 39 law clerks. 25 of them, I counted them up the other day, came from here. Now it's very true, very true, that this law school has uh, a very close relationship with our bar and with our judiciary. But I can tell you, I can look you in the eye and tell you, that's not the reason that I hired graduates of this law school to be lawyers. I can't afford, in the job I do, I could not afford that. I just couldn't afford that kind of camaraderie or doing somebody a favor. I needed quality work. I needed law clerks that were smarter than me. You know, at the end of the year, when they serve at bay, thank God they're all going because all the judges realize when the clerks are leaving, they're, they're, they're starting to realize that all of them are smarter than all of us. So thank God they can go and there be newbies coming in just like you are today. But uh, the, the, this law school produces quality lawyers. When you walk out of this place, you will be a quality lawyer. And as you mentioned, one of my clerks is sitting on the end there. Ray Hoffman worked for me in 2013. He was terrific. Every single one of the law school clerks that I had from Roger Williams has been terrific. Other judges would tell you that, as well as the judges who had clerks in the Superior Court, in the Attorney General's Office, Special Assistant Attorney Generals. You, you, this, this is a good place. You've chosen well, I congratulate you. And it is now my honor to swear you in for the first time. Three years from now, I hope I get the opportunity to swear many of you in for the second time after you've taken the bar exam and have become members of our bar or some other bar. Uh, and so with that, ladies and gentlemen, as you embark on your law school career today, they ask you to stand and raise your right hand. Now, anybody raises the wrong hand, I'm going to have a question. Good. And please repeat after me. I state your name. As I engage in the study of law. As I engage in the study of law. Do solemnly swear. To display integrity and civility. To display integrity and civility. To all with whom I come into contact. To all with whom I come into contact. To respect the law and the legal system. To respect the law and the legal system. To seek justice. To seek justice. And to adhere to the Rhode Island, I'm oh, sorry, to the Roger Williams School of Honor Code. And to the years of the Roger Williams School of Honor Code. This do I swear. This do I swear. Congratulations, you've chosen an honorable professional.
and best of luck to each and every one of you. I look forward to having you in class. I look forward to seeing you in the fall year. And three years, four years from now, I look forward to seeing you in the fall year. Congratulations.